<laughs> appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Always good to see you, Minister. Uh, appreciate your work you're doing for seniors. Uh, I know you've run through the list of, of things that you've worked on. And one of the things that when you met with the Shadow Minister uh, and myself and we discussed in the letter was the RIF uh, piece. And I know you've talked about the 25%. But what we're hearing uh, constantly is two pieces to the RIF. We have those people who would like for it to stay 100% within the fund and those who would like to take more out without penalty. So I'm sure you've heard this. I'm sure you've looked into it. I'm sure you've discussed this with your staff and finance. What are your thoughts and what have you learned about this particular aspect? Because it is a significant request that we're hearing from seniors. Thank you very much. And I, I do want to say it's very nice to be back uh, in the committee forum with you. I uh, really enjoyed working with you over so many years on the Environment Committee. Uh, this is definitely, uh, those are two things that we're hearing along with many other suggestions that seniors are sending us, telling us that they'd like us to consider. Uh, those uh, considerations that you have brought forward are ones that uh, that were, um, you know, being considered before the COVID pen pandemic. Uh, obviously, uh, our focus right now for the government is to is to get money in the hands of seniors in need, especially our vulnerable seniors, to make sure that they can deal with the very um, immediate cost increases that they've seen as a result of, uh, you know, groceries going up, uh, transportation costs going up, increase in medication, uh, dispensing fees, all of those things we've heard loud and clear. And so the focus was to get the money in the hands of Canadian seniors in need right now. Uh, these other uh, considerations, uh, the stock market is fluctuating up and down. Uh, it We immediately addressed that with a 25% reduction in, in their uh, mandatory withdrawals out of the rifts. And I have to say that we are keeping close eye on what is going on with the market and also seniors needs across the country during this time. So we'll, we'll keep, uh, keep considering uh, these uh, suggestions and uh, keep them in mind as we move forward uh, dealing with the pandemic implications and, and impacts to seniors. Thank you. Thank you. And I would suggest that those two changes don't take a lot of bureaucratic staff to do. We don't need a lot of staff to do them. And they would put money in the hands of people very quickly. And there's not, it wouldn't take a lot of changes to do that. Uh, it's a couple of regulation changes on either one of those. And it's money in the hands of seniors or protecting their investments. So it could be done very simply. Uh, so I still hope you would continue to look at that and consider them seriously. There's another issue that... Uh, uh, filing of income tax forms in the sense that uh, I'm still familiar with paper forms for income tax. And we hear from seniors who are used to doing paper forms. But as you may have noticed in the CRA, people mentioning that those forms are being mailed in and being left sitting in an office in Ottawa because CRA people are working from home. So seniors who, there again, money that in refunds that they could use very quickly are not returning. So any response uh, to that issue that you've probably heard of? Definitely have heard of the impacts. All industries, including our own uh, government, uh, uh, you know, um, organizations and uh, sort of the Canada Post, have been uh, ha experiencing difficulties with people who get sick from COVID-19 or having to stay home, and the implications of physical distancing that now need to be put into the workplace and working from home. Obviously, Canada Post is not going to have a working from home environment. They're going to need to put in practices, and we've seen that they are working very hard to do that. Their intent is to make sure that the mail gets to uh, customers as fast as possible, and they're working on those issues that are been obviously identified recently. So, but for the government in terms of making sure that 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 Canadian, uh, Canadian, especially seniors, receive those important benefits that they need, uh, we are encouraging them to do as much online banking as they can. And, and you're absolutely right. There are those that don't. So we're doing everything we can to make sure those checks get to seniors that need them. And that our programs that we're implementing are to be as easy as possible, which is why we are not uh, making our benefit where someone has to apply because that just makes it very complicated for those seniors that, as you mentioned, aren't online. Thank you. Good, thank you. I hope you follow that up with CRA and those 
forms move out and get dealt with. Thank you. Another one that you're very familiar with is the medication. So uh, seniors are very concerned with the three month to one month uh, for renewing medications. As you would realize, this means that they have to leave their homes and they're concerned about leaving their homes uh, in this times of isolation. They're concerned about volunteers or the lack of volunteers to go get these medications. And they're really concerned about um, why do we have a shortage in Canada? So those three things in the sense of medications, uh, increased dispensing fees because you got to do it monthly uh, if you're not on a plan, uh, those are causing significant concerns uh, to seniors with medications and availability and the one month uh, issuing. Short answer, please, Minister. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I just want to say that we are fully aware of the challenges